Hello dear students, welcome to pen and paper chemistry on YouTube. I hope you've got your pen and paper ready to attend another interesting session of learning organic chemistry and this video is specifically aimed for students of class 11th and 12th. So let's get going with your pen and notebook handy so that you can take down the notes for future reference. What we are going to do today is something which is very, very uh, easy. Sometimes it can get confusing, but at the same time, we cannot overlook it because it is very, very important. Now, what is this that I'm talking about? Let's see. We are talking about the various terminologies we use with the types of carbon atom. As we study and as we take, for, take on further our uh, concepts of organic chemistry, these are some of the terms that you will come across very, very often. Primary or one degree carbon or primary hydrogen as well. Secondary or two degree carbon. Tertiary or three degrees. Quaternary or four degree. But before we go ahead with that, the first basic form of carbon, you know that the first basic compound of carbon is methane, right? CH4. You remove a hydrogen from it and you get what is called as a methyl group, right? So this becomes methyl. This is how alkyls are formed. So, this is our first basic alkyl group. Now, going on to the next. Now, I am taking in the example of, uh, okay, let us move on to the next basic alkane and that is ethane. Now, two carbon atoms, of course, the others are all hydrogen, CH, CH, right? I hope you are writing this down because this will come in very, very useful for your notes. Remove one hydrogen, right? So, what do we have over here? CH3, CH2 and a dash. What does this dash mean? That its valency is still unsatisfied and it is capable of bonding with some other atom or group, right? It is called as the free valency. Right now, this carbon is attached to only one other carbon atom. Same way, this carbon is attached to only one other carbon atom. So, this is called one degree or also called as the primary carbon. Right? Let us go on to one, two, three. So, we have propane. Now, what I am going to do is to cut it short, I am not putting all the hydrogen, I am only representing it by the dashes. Now, see the first carbon. This first carbon is attached, this one is attached to only one other carbon atom, right? So, this is called as a one degree or primary carbon, right? Now, what about this carbon? If you notice, it is attached to two other carbon atoms. Now, this carbon is what we will call as the two degree or secondary carbon, a carbon atom which is attached to two other carbon atoms is called as secondary or two degree carbon atoms. Similarly, the hydrogen attached to it will be known as the two degree hydrogen. What about tertiary? Yes, wherein the carbon is attached to three other carbon atoms. So, what do we have over here? We will have this carbon is what will be called as three degree or tertiary carbon atom. There is another term that we had mentioned and that was quaternary or four degree carbon atom. What do you mean by quaternary or four degree? A carbon which is attached to four other carbon atoms is called as four degree or 
quaternary, right? And we cannot have more than that carbon atoms attached to it because the maximum covalency of carbon is how much is it? Very good, it's 4. So, we have got primary carbon, a carbon which is attached to only one other carbon, right? So, this becomes my 1 degree. Anyway, this will also be 1 degree carbon. A carbon which is attached to two other carbon atoms is what we call as the 2 degree carbon. A carbon which is attached to three other carbon atoms becomes the 3 degree or tertiary carbon atom and of course, quaternary quarter comes from the word 4, right? Have you noted this down? Okay then, there we go. Let us test you now. The question for you is to identify the primary, secondary or tertiary alcohol out of these. You know that alcohol is a compound wherein the functional group is OH, right? So, I have got 1, 2 and 3. Which one of these is primary? Have a look at the carbon to which OH is attached. Concentrate on that carbon. That particular carbon is attached to how many other carbon atoms will give you an idea whether it is primary, secondary or tertiary. Attempt this question. Pause the video, try it. I know for some of you it will be very easy. Amines. Amines are derivatives of ammonia, right? So, we have here since they are derivatives of ammonia NH3, that means this is my starting compound. Replace one of the hydrogen by an alkyl group, any alkyl group. So, this is here for example, CH3 NH2. The nitrogen of the amino group is attached to one other alkyl group. Hence, this becomes a 1 degree or a primary amine. Replace the second hydrogen by an alkyl group. So, you are left with NH and as an alkyl the two alkyl groups may be same or they can be different. For example, we will have NH CH3 CH3, right? So, herein the nitrogen is attached to two other alkyl groups. This becomes a secondary or a two degree amine. It is a derivative of ammonia, right? What about tertiary? Very good. Wow, super impressive. You have done it. R, R, R. There are three alkyl groups. And in all these structures, please do not forget the lone pair of electrons at each point, right? Do not forget that nitrogen is carrying a lone pair of electrons in each of these molecules. Why am I stressing on that? You will see. So, this is 3 degree amine. Now, can we have, do we have any more hydrogen to replace from the nitrogen? So, so we had from ammonia, we had the primary amine from primary to the secondary, secondary to the tertiary. You notice we have just mentioned a lone pair of electrons because of which it can act as an electron donor. So, we can have a structure something like this. I am going to explain it in a very, very simple way. I am not going into the nitty gritties of it. So, let us suppose it forms a compound with HCl. So, H positive and Cl negative. You notice over here, it has used its lone pair of electrons to give to the hydrogen ion. So, the hydrogen says, oh, oh, see I have got electrons from nitrogen. So, I will give you my electrons. So, with the result Cl carries a negative charge. Now, if you recall this is something which is similar to any positive Cl negative, an ionic compound which is a salt. And these are quaternary amines. 
that is why I have written over here salts. The details of this we shall be pursuing further when we talk about amines in our detailed study. For the present, these are some basic basic concepts because you are new to organic chemistry, these will help you sail through and reach the point where we can go to the next level of our understanding organic chemistry. Another terminology, before we go on to another ter terminology, should we test you? Now you see this structure over here, uh, what you have to concentrate on is, see I have got a chain of 6 carbon atoms over here. So you can simply draw it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Then there is one branch at the third carbon atom, 1, 2 and each the first carbon has 2 more branches. At the fifth carbon, there is carbon another over here, H, H and H. So, basically it is a methyl group. And at the second carbon, again we have carbon, carbon, carbon and a hydrogen. I have not depicted the hydrogen for these, but for left it like that for ease of use. And also not depicting the rest of the hydrogen over here right CH3, you can complete the hydrogens, I do not want to overcrowd it. This is the structure that I had drawn and if you notice, I have written mentioned over here the numbers of the carbon. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then you have 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, in all now, this is not according to the IUPAC system. I have just numbered them. Now, what you have to do? Tell me or list all the primary carbon number atoms, all the numbers which depict secondary carbon atoms, all the numbers which depict a tertiary carbon atom. Go ahead and do it. Pause the video try it. Now, there are three more terms. Oh, you were looking, you were waiting for the answer, right? No, I want you to do it yourself and towards the end, I will give you the answers to both the questions that I have asked you. In fact, more that I am going to ask you during the course of this session. We are going to talk about something called as N, ISO and NEO, you know these terms to be honest for a long time I also could not understand it. So, I have taken uh, liberties in explaining it in a little different way and by the way you cannot ignore this system because although it is a common system it is definitely adopted and adapted by IUPAC system as well. So, we are going to talk about three terms, N for normal, ISO means isomer of normal and NEO means new, right? Oh, that takes care of it. So, normal, so how would you write a, your carbon compound or a carbon chain usually? This is how you would write, so that becomes the normal. What about isomer, iso means same, mer means molecule. We are talking about the same molecule, but probably with a different arrangement and there we have, right? So, that becomes the isoform. What about the neo? We have to look at that, right? If you can see in the normal, how is it? All the carbon atoms are arranged in one straight chain not straight, I would say a one continuous chain, right? Isoform is wherein if you notice over here, there is one branch, there is one branch and that is having methyl group attached to it, right? So, if I have a chain like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and here is a methyl group attached, right? And if I consider this as the tail end. So, I will have a block 
like this in the isomer of the normal form what we depict as the isoform. So, one so this compound has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right. This compound has got 6 and 1, 7, 7 carbon atoms. So, according to the common system, I repeat according to the common system, it would be named as isoheptane. Heptane wherein one of the carbon atoms is a side chain at the carbon atom at the second last carbon atom, right. What would be its IUPAC name? Think for those of you who have done the IUPAC system, go ahead name this compound in the IUPAC system. Now, here I have got a 6 carbon compound. So, again if you notice I have not depicted the hydrogen just to leave me some freedom, some space right. So, I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 right. All straight chains, 6 carbon atoms. So, it is N hexane or normal hexane right. Again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right got it again it is an isomer of hexane right with one branch at the second last carbon you see over here this block. So, this is also called as isohexane right. Again I repeat this is in the common system. How would you name it in the IUPAC system? Yes, this would be called as 2-methyl pentane. Is not it a lot easier? I am sure you will appreciate now that IUPAC system is much easier than the common system used earlier. Let us jump to the next one. one 2, 3, 4 and there is a 5 and there is a 6 over here right there are 2 carbon atoms again it is an isomer of hexane. But I have already named one is hexane isomer as isohexane I cannot call this as second isohexane right it will be very odd. So, what they did was they said ok this is a new form of hexane. So, what are we going to do it? Okay, let us call it as neohexane, right? And what is the speciality of this? Look at this over here. At the terminal end, you are forming a T. In the case of isoform, at the terminal end, you are forming a V. At the terminal end, nothing in the case of a normal compound. So, you have a straight chain, you have a single branch or a single methyl group at the second last carbon and you have two methyl groups at the second last carbon and we have something a new hexane what we call as a new hexane right. Now, let us test your understanding of what has been done till now. What do you have to do? You have to draw the structures of these compounds n-pentane, isoheptane, neopentane, tertiary butyl group, isopropyl alcohol and isobutyl alcohol. Go ahead, pause the video. You know for one moment you will feel that you have understood everything. But if you close this video, take your notebook and just write down these structures, the answers to these questions. If you get them right, that is it. You are well placed. Then you need not worry. But my experience says that 90 percent of you will not be able to get all of them right in one go. Why? Those 90 percent are the ones who are only watching the video and not writing. Better get down to write 
and practice these structures. Go ahead, be honest with yourself. Have you completed? Want to check your answers? Want to discuss the answers? Let's go ahead. N pentane, that means all the five carbon atoms, penta, five, pentagon, right? So one, two, three, four, and five. All five carbon atoms in a chain, you can complete the hydrogen. I have not completed it. By the way, you know, you can instead of this, you can also indicate these by bond line notation. So you have one, two, three, four, and five. Where at the terminal end it is CH3, and at each of the vertices is a carbon. So you can depict N pentane like this also. It is equally acceptable, right? because it is one continuous chain, that is why it is acceptable, right? Okay. Go on next, isoheptane, that means I am talking about seven carbon atoms, but iso means there is a V or a T, yes there is a V. So, I have got the V over here in place. Now, let me complete. So, three carbon atoms used up over here, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Since 7, right? You can complete the hydrogen. Go on to, can you try and draw the bond line notation for this? Go ahead, try it. So, you have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and at the second there is a methyl group. There you go. Easy? Neopentane that means I have got penta again means 5, neo means there is a T, right? There we go. Here our T is ready. Do you see the T over here? Got it? And then we have so, total 5 carbon atoms. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and there we go with the fifth one, right? And please do not forget to complete the hydrogen atoms over there. Tertiary butyl. Did you get it? Okay. Tertiary means hmm, primary, secondary and tertiary. Okay, so butyl means one of the hydrogen has been removed from butane, correct? And tertiary, that means there is a carbon which is attached to three other carbon atoms, right? That is what makes it and here is our free valency. So, we have CH3 here, we have CH3, we have CH3. We will not put the hydrogen over here because then that will make it again neopentane. What we have got over here is an alkyl group where there is a free valency. It can bind with an OH group and what does it give us? Yes, tertiary butyl alcohol, right? Did I give you a clue for the next one? Yes, I did I think, right? Let us go on. Mm, iso, no, there is no tertiary butyl alcohol, but look at these structures. We have got isopropyl alcohol. So, what have we got over here? Isoneo, N isoneo. So, that means I have got a, yes, a V at the end. Propyl alcohol, and this gives us an OH. Uh, how about putting a, um, so we have got over here, sorry, I wrote this structure, how about putting an OH over here, so then this becomes CH3, CH2, CH2, OH, would this be counted as isopropyl alcohol? No, it would not be, it will be normal because if you see your continuous chain is only of the carbon atoms and it is not making that 
we, correct? Because we need a side chain. There is no side chain over here. Here it's a longest continuous chain. Whereas here there's a methyl group attached at the second last carbon of the chain. Again, I repeat, this is in the common system. Present system says you name it as what? Yes, let's name it according to the present system. So we have OH over here. This is 1, 2 and 3, propen, 2, all. Right? For those who are not familiar with the IUPAC system, there are separate videos on this topic, uh, sets of four videos explaining IUPAC nomenclature in detail. Isobutyl alcohol, go ahead and draw it. There we have isobutyl alcohol. So again, what we've got iso means there is a V of the carbon atoms at the tail end. Got it? Mm, is it over teacher? Mm, not yet because there is another test ready for you during the lesson. Go ahead. Identify the primary, secondary and tertiary compounds in these. It should be very, very easy for you. Go step by step. You notice that I am giving you a functional group over here. The functional group is attached to a carbon and that carbon is attached to how many other carbon atoms will help you to identify. You have done something like this earlier. 4, 5, 6, go ahead. These are halogen derivatives of the alkanes. Again, list them as primary, secondary and tertiary. It is a continuity of the previous question. That is the last one, seventh one. Uh, for ease of convenience only, I have not put down the hydrogen. You can put the hydrogen over here in each one of them like this, right? I just leave it blank. Yes. How do you know? Yes, because the valency of carbon is 4. The maximum valency of carbon is 4. Have you done? Okay, should we discuss the answers? So, if you notice OH is attached to a carbon which is attached to two other carbon atoms. So, this is two degree or secondary. OH is attached to a carbon which is attached to only one other carbon atom, right? So, this will be primary or one degree. OH is attached to a carbon which is attached to one, two, three carbon atoms. Absolutely right. This is a 3 degree or tertiary compound. Go ahead. Next one. We have got Cl. We are going to see it with respect to the Cl. So, the carbon to which the substituent is attached is only attached to one other carbon atom. So, 1 degree. Cl is attached to a carbon which is attached to two other carbon atoms. 2 degree. Cl is attached to a carbon which is attached to only one other carbon atom, 1 degree. Cl is attached to a carbon which is attached to one, two, three other carbon atoms. Absolutely right. It is 3 degree or tertiary. If you have got them all correct, very good. I love to see smiling faces. Uh -huh. Smile should be good and long, right? We are not yet done, little more to go because I came across some more aisles which I thought let me cover in this lesson. You know what are those aisles? We have got uh, vinyl, we have got allyl, we have got phenyl and benzyl. What are these now? Easy way to remember. These are the vinyl and allyl are nothing but the derivatives of unsaturated compounds. So, the first compound is alkene, CH2 double bond CH2. Now, how did we get the alkyl? From the alkene, we removed one hydrogen and we got the alkyl. Same way from the alkene, we will remove one hydrogen, right? 
So, when you remove one hydrogen from ethene, these are again as I repeat this is common name, it is called vinyl, CH2 double bond CH and a free valency. Take propene, so this is our ethene, IUPAC name, this is our propene, again IUPAC name. You remove the hydrogen from the alkyl group. So, you will have one free valency over here CH double bond CH2 and this becomes our allyl group. You will come across vinyl alcohol, you will also come across allyl alcohol. These are the two examples of it. Notice over here the functional group is attached where? Yes, at the free valency end. Got it? We are not attaching it at the unsaturation point. Oh, look at that. From benzene, if we remove a hydrogen from the ring, right, we have got what we call as phenyl. Methyl benzene or toluene you remove a hydrogen from the CH3 group and we have what we call as benzyl. Where are we going to use them? Again, I repeat, these are common names and common terms which were given before the IUPAC system was devised, but they have been accepted. So, would you like to name these compounds? If you know the IUPAC system, it will be easy for you. So, you have 1, 2 and 3. At the second carbon, we have this substituent which is called as phenyl. So, we will have 2 phenyl. Now, in our compound, how many carbon atoms in the main chain? 3, 3 makes prop. Saturated, unsaturated, so it is saturated in and what is the functional group all and what is the functional group uh, position 1. So, join them, we have 2 phenyl propen and we drop the E because there is an O, it is a vowel. So, we have propen 1 all or you can also list it as propen all. Position number 1 is not depicted. All these again I repeat have been discussed in the IUPAC system. Now, look at this second one. Now, if you notice this is what group we did we call it as? Benzyl, right? So, according to the common system it is called as benzyl alcohol and again Again, it is accepted in the IUPAC system. So, what would be this? Benzyl chloride, very correct. And this is how you are going to come across when we do this particular topic further on. Hope this lesson cleared your doubts as much as mine. Happy learning to all of you. Stay tuned because I am coming up with very easy to follow flowcharts for organic compounds. Some are already there on the channel and some are on their way. And not to forget the answers to the questions that I had posed during the lesson. Identify primary, secondary or tertiary alcohols. Very good. I know you did not need the answers. Yes, please. This is primary. This one is secondary. This one is tertiary, right? OH group attached to a carbon which is attached to 1, 2, 3. OH attached to a carbon which is attached to two other carbon atoms, right? And there we have the answer to the complex, complex structure that we had drawn. One degree, the numbers of the carbon atoms which are primary are 1, 12, 13, 10, 7, 9, 14, 6. Secondary is only position number 4. 
tertiary is 2, 11, 3 and 5. And for those of you who found out that there is a quaternary carbon as well, right? Carbon number 8 which is attached to 4 other carbon atoms. A big thumbs up to you. Very good. And the next video would be on properties of alkyl halides and I have the flow chart in place for you. Stay tuned.